Donald Trump finally meets Kim Jong Un. You are watching Paradise TV, and now the news in detail. I am Andy Kema. Thanks for joining us. 39 persons have been arrested by the anti-crime unit of the Kaniping police for allegedly engaging in various crimes in the municipality. The suspects, who include seven Senegalese, are said to have committed crimes such as robbery, pickpocketing, amongst others. This was disclosed by the deputy PR of the Gambia Police Force, ASP David Fode Conta, at a press briefing. Lamin Fall was there and reports. The Anti-Crimes Unit of the Gambia Police Force over the weekend has arrested 39 persons for committing various crimes. The Office of the PRO of the Gambia Police Force has called on the media to brief them on this arrest. For the Anti-Crime Unit since its establishment, the unit has been embarking on frequent patrols, both day and night patrols. As a result of these patrols, Many suspects have been arrested, screened, profiled, and the due process of the law follows. Based on the establishment of this unit, our records have indicated that there is a drastic fall in the commitment of crimes in the country, but especially in the Kanifing region where the anti-crime unit is based. So, under this backdrop, the Gambia Police Force, under the leadership of the Inspector General of Police, felt it very, very necessary to, cap to capacitize these people, to strengthen their office, so that they will help not only the Gambia Police Force, but the entire country in combating crimes and making so that uh, Gambia, if not a crime-free country, but crime drops drastically to the lowest level. As we speak, we have in our custody 39 suspects. And all these suspects are arrested by the anti-crime unit. And their arrest is based on um, crimes or would-be crimes that they have committed. They are with us. They have done a very good job to screen them, to profile them, to send them to the relevant offices that are responsible for um, uh, their affairs. For instance, we have child offenders. So if you come across child offenders, the anti-crime unit is well aware of the fact that the office that is to be responsible of them is the child welfare unit or gender and child welfare unit. The unit is established based on the reasons that there are too many or there were too many crimes that were purportedly said to be happening in the country. Due to this backdrop, the Office of the Inspector General of Police felt it necessary to establish the unit so as to serve as a deterrent and to complement one of our mandates, that is to prevent crimes. CSP Gorgimbub, who is the head of the anti-crime unit, also spoke to Paradise TV News. Uh, the other hotline is 990-2445. Uh, 990-2445. Uh, we got a previous number before, but it was uh, misused by the general public because at the end of the day, what actually happened was criminals, they themselves, will use the number to call us and tell us that there is a problem in Bakau when they are operating in Fajikunda. So, you see what happened? We will concentrate in Bakau and then they will do their things in the Fajikunda. So this is why this time we don't want to publicize the number, but there is a hotline, of course, if you can manage it on your own, let it be very secure, because we are here to serve the general public. We want to make sure that we are on the doorsteps of every Gambian. 
Uh, I am not saying no. I'm not saying yes because here, if you add it at the end of the day, the criminal it land in the in the ears of the criminal, they misuse it. With the formation of the anti-crime unit, the Gambia Police Force is committed on clamping down crimes in the country. Lamin Fall for Paradise TV News. The Gambia Police Force has rubbished accusations that they are refusing to investigate a case of a child sexual abuse brought against a French national, Colonel John Verneau. According to them, investigations are ongoing to ensure justice is done. A group in the Gambia known as Justice for Child Sexually Abused Victims over the weekend accused the police of trying to ignore calls for the prosecution of a suspect who is said to be an advisor to the Interior Minister. However, responding to a question as to why the police is not interested in the matter, Deputy Public Relations Officer of the Gambian Police Force Assistant, Superintendent Fode Conta, says investigations are still ongoing. You know, uh, those um, uh, victims, you know, they don't keep the evidences, you know, of the crimes that are committed um, to them, especially if they are under age. You know, they don't know how to keep evidences. You know, by the time the police come, you know, to um, investigate into the murder, most of the evidences are gone. You know, so if that happens, it makes it very, very difficult for us. But notwithstanding, we uh, keep, you know, doing the investigations to see whether we will have some corroborations. You know, whether we will have some um, a form of um, uh, uh, corroborations that can get the man, pin down the man. You know, but uh, at the end of the day, the police, we are here to make sure that um, uh, justice uh, prevails. We are here to make sure that you know everybody, you know, has, you know, your rights. You know, so in order to um, uh, get rights for X, doesn't mean that we have to victimize the other person. You know, so investigations is ongoing, and uh, uh, by the grace of God, uh, it, if it comes to a conclusion, we are always in touch with you. Uh, you will be let known of it. You know, but investigation process can take up to 90 days. You know, so that um, uh, justice can be done. In Africa, a child is seen as belonging to society, hence his or her welfare is seen as a responsibility for everyone. However, with the assimilation of foreign culture, the long-held culture is being eroded as more people are now living as nuclear families who believe in taking care of their own children. This development has created a situation where a section of society believes the moral fiber is eroding with children going wayward. According to this section, Morality is being lost because, apart from their parents, no one else has the rights to correct children whenever they go wrong. The question is, should the responsibility of raising children be just on parents? Fatima Yoyosar has been finding out from the streets. Child raising and upbringing is very crucial in an upbringing, it's very crucial in our societies. But the trend nowadays is quite different from the past generations. But what might have been the cause? Is it the parents, the children themselves, or our societies? PTV went to find the answers. Because the way kids are brought up nowadays, they spend too long on the internet and they spend too long on their phones. At our time when we were younger, we spend a lot of time outside, we play a lot, we have like friends, we communicate. But now, kids, it's so difficult even to communicate with kids because everything is the internet even you stay with kids at home they want to tell you something they don't come you know straight forward to talk to you they will text you just to talk to you or they will be on they spend too long on texting they spend too long on snapchat i think that that is what the difference is child raising and upbringing has been different in so many years and especially nowadays when we have social media for example because like some people will have issues in their family and they're gonna post it online so um, people are gonna raise their opinion sometimes you know they could face legal action and things like that and there are many rules nowadays that tend to protect children that are saying no one must beat their child or beat their student in class something like that so it has been very different because that wasn't happening in the past it used to take a whole community to raise a child you can see somebody's child misbehaving and you intervene without any fear. But nowadays, even somebody whom you share the same mom and dad with, 
intervening when their child misbehaves, you have two minds. As you have heard, several factors contribute to the change in behavior in children nowadays. Some people blame it on the existence of child rights in this country. Others blame it on the advancement of technology. While few were quick to point fingers on our very own societies. For Paradise TV News, I am Fatima Yoyosar. Quite an interesting story there, but personally speaking, I believe we should be each other's keepers. We'll go for a short break, but when we return, international news and sports is next. Don't go away. Albinism is the complete or partial absence of pigment in the skin, hair and eyes. Albinism occurs in all races and ethnicities with a frequency of about 1 in 17,000 with most cases in sub-Saharan Africa. Albinism results in acute sensitivity or intolerance to light, severely reduced visual clarity, involuntary eye movement sometimes called dancing eyes. Apex Optics is giving free consultations and glasses to all albinos at all our branches until 16th June 2018. Apex Optics truly perfecting vision. Welcome back and now a look at sports. American World Heavyweight Champion Deontre Wilder says he has agreed to fight Britain's Anthony Joshua in the UK. The 32-year-old holds the WBC title and wants to a unification fight with Joshua, the WBA, IBF, and WBO champion. He wrote on Twitter, the $50 million offer for him to fight me next in the US is still available. Today, I even agreed to their offer to fight Joshua next in the UK. According to Wilder's manager, Sally Finkel, they had officially accepted terms to fight in the UK. Joshua and promoter Eddie Hahn have yet to properly respond, though Hahn has previously criticized the Wilder team for appearing to do their business via social media, insisting deals are made in the boardroom, not on Instagram. So the 28-year-old Joshua agreed to fight with the American. The winner will make history to become the fourth heavyweight with all four recognized world titles at once. Well, I can't wait to see that fight. And moving away from sports, U.S. President Donald Trump says his talks with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un that ended a joint agreement were honest, direct, and productive. Mr. Trump says he will halt war games while Mr. Kim has promised to destroy a missile testing site. Mr. Trump says he will halt war games while Mr. Kim has promised to destroy a missile testing site. Their agreement also included a commitment from Mr. Kim to rid the Korean Peninsula of nuclear weapons. It is the first time a sitting U.S. president and North Korean leader have met. The pair shook hands, held talks together, and ate lunch accompanied by advisors. It caps a remarkable turnaround for the two, who last year were engaged in angry threats. The summit which was centered on nuclear disarmament and reducing tensions led to an agreement. The two countries will cooperate towards new relations while the U.S. will provide security guarantees to North Korea. And with these stories, we come to the end of news. But before we take leave of you, let's look at the headlines once again. Kanifing police arrest 39 for robbery and stealing. Gambians share opinions on child robbery. In sports, Anthony Joshua to fight Deontay Wilder. And Donald Trump finally meets Kim Jong-un. Well, that's all for this edition of Paradise TV News in English. I am Andy Kemmer. Don't forget, News in Mandinka, it's at 8 and News in Wolof, it's at 9. Thank you.